tonight on Wise Guy. See, I don't see myself as kissing off this nation. I see myself as protecting it. The guys you're looking for are a daisy chain of men in high places. You're sure Lococo's not gonna hurt you? I'm just as sure that these guys will. I want the satisfaction of knowing that he is gone. Listen to me. If he slips through and they manage to hit you, I swear on my family, I'll kill him myself. All right, guys, I need a few minutes. Why don't you go grab some lunch? <clears throat> Why are we closing this case, Frank? Vince, we stumbled onto a criminal empire and we brought it down. Now, what's left here are records leading to some of the biggest criminals on Earth. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. I'd say it's a job well done. Roger Lococo. Oh, Vince. Roger Lococo was working for the CIA while you were working for the OCB. You're going after the same criminal from different directions. No, no, no. That's too neat, Frank. Lococo's been in this a long time. He's got a lot more on his plate than just Mel Profit. What about the takeover of Ville Pavot? I talked to Arthur Franklin. He's the attorney general specialist on constitutional law. He's got top secret clearance. He could not establish Lococo's existence in the CIA. Frank, the guy does exist which means he's in so deep that the CIA front office doesn't know what he's up to. What about a meeting with this catcher guy? He's in the company, too. Somebody's got to know what's going on. Catcher came to the company by way of the special forces, a real destabilization ideologue. They tried to remove him, but the guy wouldn't go quietly, so they put him in research and shuffled him off to the boonies. I guess they just figured the guy had fade away. Well, if you know that much, then you know that I'm not ready to close shop on this yet. And what are you going to do? I'm going to confront Roger. I want to hear it from him that the only reason he was in this was to bring down profit. That is not a good idea. The guy is dangerous. There's an understanding between us, one undercover operative to another. I'm going to go talk to him. And I am ordering you not to. So, you be real careful on your vacation, you understand? Thanks, Frank. Vince. What? I would sleep a lot better at night if you'd make your call in schedule. You got it. Vinny. What? The guys you're looking for are a daisy chain of men in high places, abusing their power. They're invisible. They want to stay that way. You're sure Lococo's not going to hurt you? I'm just as sure that these guys will. Hi. 
Where's Roger? May I? How long's Roger been gone? But you know he's not coming back, don't you? Now, how do you know that? He called you. Somebody else called you and said he wasn't coming back. He told you to pick up whatever was left, the groceries. You understand me. Why don't you talk to me? Oh, who are you? What? Who are you? No tongue? Who are you? I'm sorry. Do you know who it was that called you? Mike tearing over. USA money section. Standard collapse rollover. Hey, what's your 20, Vinny? Still Vancouver. Listen, I need anything on a Morris Daniels, South Dakota driver's license number DK584599983. It's probably bogus. How quick you need this? I'll hold. All right, hang on. It's going to take a minute. Daniels is bogus. All right, try uh, Michael Derhausen, Florida driver's license number 320 937 547A. 
And I got a social security card and a passport. Social security number 22136. Bingo. When a guy comes up this quick, you know you're in trouble. What do we got? Oh, boy, this guy's right at the top of the what's he up to list. A mercenary. Wherever this guy goes, the nations change their name. Rhodesia, Zaire, Biafra, the Belgian Congo. Cashiered out of the service, Section 8, mental case. What branch? Special Forces. Who's his commanding officer? That's going to take a minute. Never mind. I know who it is. Bernie, use the phone. Roger! Roger! Vinny. Yeah. I got you booked on the first morning flight to DC. McPike's got. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I lost catcher. He's taking off in a private jet right now with no numbers. Yeah, well, you got to get to DC ASAP. You got to track down that jet. All right, I'll do what I can. But you are on the first flight out of Vancouver tomorrow morning. Why? 
Justice Department brass wants to see you. McPike wants to know where Darehausen fits into this. He doesn't. About three hours ago, I killed him. Huh? Huh? Ah, you look like you're going through hell. Yeah, well, we're following you, Buckwheat. Hey. Does you have your nervous system on? Yeah, it's your nerve right here. Oh, come on. Hang on, come on, come on, come on, I'm in. Hey, hey. Ooh, ooh. See that? Ooh. Carl, <clears throat> you are looking good. Well, thank you. Don't take it as too big a compliment, Carl. Just means he ain't looking at you through bars. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Well, it's real good to see you too, Roger. When are we getting our money? Ah, down to business. Get in the car. Follow me. I gotta close the gate. Go. Guy. All right, let's go. Boy Scout Jamboree? This is Paris Island, Buckwheat. Come on, up and out, let's go! Il Pavo's Freedom Fighters. I think I want more money. Come on! Listen up. These men will be in charge for the duration of this engagement. For the next five days, you will do exactly as they say, without hesitation. If you do not, on the sixth day, you will die. Dismissed! Lights out! Mr. Lococo, I need to see Mr. Lococo. You will not threaten my men. You have a problem, you bring it to me. Mr. Lalonde? Are we clear on this? Rush! I am the president of a government in exile. It would be appropriate for you to address me as such. Look, pal, we're going to be together for seven days now. After that, you can president anything you want, but until then, just stay out of my way. Is the attorney general coming down here? Yes. I would describe the situation as urgent. Relax, Vince. We're a nation built on rock. Let's skip formality. Attorney General Grayson, this is Field Director Frank McPike. Sir. And Vincent Terranova, OCB undercover do do? Jack, just call me Jack. Uh, Arthur, put that damn thing out. Let's do it. Yes, sir. <sighs> Those were Gary Gilmore's last words. Let's do it. Well, what kind of man says that to a firing squad, huh? Roger Lococo. Born Odessa, Texas, 1950. To be and Honey Lococo. Now, they were wildcatters. They hit it big about a year after Roger's birth. Now, Roger was sent to boarding school. He was six years old. Graduated at 16, grade point average 4.0. He excelled at athletics, forged his parents' signature and enlisted. Three tours of duty, Vietnam, 12 field citations, including the Medal of Honor. He was recruited into covert forces by a Captain Herbert Ketcher. Now, somewhere in the middle of 1974, record-wise, Lococo disappeared. He resurfaced again about a year ago in the wake of several contract murders the OCB was investigating. Agent Terranova, using his reputation developed as a result of infiltrating the mob, made contact with Lococo. Vince? Roger Lococo worked for Mount Profit. The arms dealer died a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. On the months before he died, the arms trade seemed to dry up for no apparent reason. 
So Mel went back to drug trafficking to try to prop it up, but it didn't work. Now, Roger had been urging Mel to take over an island, suggesting that he could own the drug trade from the soil to the street. The more business collapsed, the more Mel bought into Roger's idea. Then he showed up one day with this finance minister from Il Pavo, with plans for a coup using Mel's money and munitions contacts. And they got into some voodoo stuff I don't begin to understand, but it left both of them dead. At Agent Terranova's request, I tailed Lococo, which led to Herbert Ketcher. Now, we cross-reference phone and travel records. Ketcher's movement duplicate Lococo's from the time Lococo became involved with profit. Why do I need to know this? Herb Ketcher is employed by the CIA. Do you believe you've stumbled into a covert operation? We think the catcher is responsible for Prophet's collapse. Now, yesterday in Vancouver, this man, Michael Derhausen, went to Lococo's loft and murdered his housekeeper. He also tried to assassinate Agent Terranova, who, in defending himself, killed Derhausen. Derhausen's a mercenary. His first military involvement is with Herbert Ketcher. Now, Agent Terranova searched the motel room and found, among other things, an airline ticket to Il Pavo. Henri Lalonde. Vocal opposition to Beauvau's current leadership. Jack, there's a pretty clear suggestion of an extra-legal military action here. Nothing concrete. Jack, Herb Ketcher has security clearance to the White House. Who authorized it? Admiral Stryken. Damn. Where's Ketcher? Unknown. The Coco? Same. Oh, ideologue hard sells his southern hemisphere paranoia at every cocktail party inside the Beltway. Damn self-appointed patriot. What I've heard here today doesn't leave this room. Your duty, Vince, is depressingly clear. Yes, sir. Where do you start? Uh, it's a shot in the dark. Arthur, right? I'd like to play this a little close to the vest. Of course, Frank. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Derhausen's ticket has him landing in Il Pavo in five days. We do not have time for shots in the dark. You didn't even know what I was going to say. Where are you going? Where I'm going, I'm going by myself. Wait a second. We're working outside OCB procedure here. I am not going to have you do that alone. Frank, you haven't been in the trenches for years. <laughs> oh, but when I was. Come on. Where are we going? Roger brought me out here when I first hooked up with him. It was nothing of value, but it was gated and padlocked. And he had these cutout figures in the field he used for target practice. It was just like his loft. A huge and lonely feeling. Every place else I went with Roger was rich and cluttered, but that was profit. This place, this place was definitely Lococo. I know the guys here. Four of us and those Boy Scouts against 1,500 men? The tricky part is here. 50 heavily armed men guard the presidential residences. Baraka's brigades. The islanders believe they're imbued with some celestial powers. Oh, great. Caribbean Pentecostals. Well, Bobby Carl can just go in there and preach him to death. Why don't you just shut up, Walker? Oh, hey, hey, team. Now, our main launch will be on the garrison and the radio station. Derhausen will be on island a day ahead of us. He will set off 20 minutes of concussion grenades, pin him down with noise. Russell will lead Lalonde and his men into the radio station. Once Lalonde broadcasts, that island is ours. What about the compound of demon worshippers? M16s married to M203s. Their heaviest weapons are Vulcans, elevated on concrete struts. Two at either front or corner of the wall. Take them out and they're pinned inside the compound. We just hang up a sign that says Il Pavo Jail. Who is it? It's me. Guys, how's the strategy going? We don't need any help, Herb. Can I talk to you for a minute, Roger? Do your homework. No TV till you do your homework. Did you have to light a fire under the lawn? He's having a fit because you insulted him in front of his men. This military incursion on behalf of democracy is quickly turning into Herb Ketcher's triumphant return to oh. the Potomac. Don't come on to me, Roger. You're pulling enough cash from this operation to buy a seat on the stock exchange. Well, we all know what that's worth, don't we? Look, 
You've got a pusillanimous potentate on your hands, pal, and I am gritting my teeth to get through this for I don't know why. But for the next six days, I own this show. Do you understand? What do you think? It's probably going to get dirty. You might want to get a change of clothing before we secure the island. These are the colors of my people. Your people. Pardon? Did Herbert explain things to you? Are we clear on this, Herbert? No, I was just talking to Roger. Well, Mr. Lococo? What is it? You're beautiful. Why, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Coco must be here. What do you mean, must? Well, these people say they've never seen it before. You show them the photo, they all go numb. The boy had to do some heavy tipping to keep them all quiet. And we wait, he'll come to us. Or you, anyway. It's a sure bet they told him there's a scrawny little guy with funny-looking glasses snooping around. But well, thanks for the kind words. You don't mention it. Thank you. Thanks. You know... It's amazing how places stay the same. I bet when I was a field operative, I spent a thousand nights in places like this. Yeah, it stinks, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, this guy's been in every bar I've ever been in. So change seats. Oh, you read too much into it. Did you talk to the lifeguard? Yeah. There's an anti-terrorist team on alert in Wichita Falls. Now, I can be here inside of three hours. I don't want to go for warrants till we're sure we have material evidence at the hangar. You know, this guy's really bugging me. Franks, will you lighten up? He's the guy's playing with a full deck of jokers. Just relax. So what's he going to do? He's going to ask for a date? So why don't you call it a night, then? Now, how am I going to sleep with all this going on? Frank, I promise you, Lococo sleeps, too. Uh, all right. I'm gonna get some rest. Don't forget to chain lock your door. Last call, everybody. How important is he to you? Inside his suit, the label says Sid Shack, Secaucus, New Jersey. Not really, Vince. How close can you get to that kind of bad taste? Is he alive? It's your call, Buckwheat. Never did like that, did you? <laughs> Couple of beers, please. We're closed. Right away. Mr. McPike is fine. He'll be released when we leave. Roger, why are you doing this? <sighs> why? Why is a question you and I stopped asking ourselves a long time ago, Vince? I didn't. Well, maybe you should. There's a lot of pain involved with that question. But the pain is there, Roger. The difference between you and me is I deal with it. You blind yourself to it, but don't tell me it doesn't hurt. You can save that for your buddies. I can't afford the doubt that comes with that question. No, no, you can't afford the truth that comes with it. You stay out of this. No, I want an answer. How do you go from Medal of Honor to mercenary? At what point do you kiss off the nation for these dirty little wars? 
I live in a thicket infested by zealots bent on the bloodletting of this nation. They raise a glass of sake to the rising sun and plummet zeros filled with dynamite into our fathers. They beat themselves with chains until they arrive at a narcotized state, and then they shout, Allah, and drive truckloads of explosives into our brothers. They thump Marxist manifestos like some backwater evangelist and carve away half of Europe, enslaving our cousins. Now, they want what we have, but they don't want to arrive at it by initiative. They want it by insurrection. These are the residents of Mr. Lococo's neighborhood. It's a scum-ridden place to live, but I live there to stop them. I don't see myself as kissing off this nation. I see myself as protecting it. Who were you protecting when you had your housekeeper killed? That was bad, Roger. She took a load of buckshot, point blank. Who did it? Darehausen. But he didn't get so lucky with me. Is he dead? Yeah. And they're both laying in your loft. I followed Ketcher back there. And he saw the bodies. And you know what? He left laughing. Another blow struck for democracy, huh, Raj? I want McPike back. You okay, man? Yeah. Vince! been all night. You lost your senses? Look what I find in the motorhome, hmm? Now, you're the only man I know who likes to invite his liabilities home for supper. He's got to go. Where's Darehausen? Did you hear a word I said? Every paltry syllable, where's Darehausen? He's always been unreliable. I don't know where he is. He may have to go without him. Now, this guy's got to go. If this is a shouting match, I win. I'm on the phone with the chairman of the Unified Bottling Corporation. How can I conduct business? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. You can imagine the chaos that comes with this kind of operation. Uh, don't be hesitant about labor. The world is full of willing workers. Yes, they make too much now. I'm certain they will accept cutbacks to help expand your business. I can be very persuasive if properly motivated. You gonna handle it? I said, are you gonna handle it? Team, you talk to them? Yeah. Give Dick Pike the training news he assembled. Bring it to me and bring a clip. Hey, you are doing it, aren't you? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Not a one, Buckwheat. As long as it doesn't cut into the money. Has it ever? Thank you, brother. Take that stuff off. Hey, Pike. I have to do something. I'm going to try and make it as painless as possible. Oh, I'd take that off, too. <clears throat> you scum, Lococo. Why, thank you, Frank. You're gonna make this much easier. Okay. Okay. Her. 
Everything's taken care of with my house lady, right? I said I'd take care of it. I took care of it. I don't leave loose ends. Hundred grand apiece, man. Get out of here. Get it in a bank. Quiet. It was 50, Roger. I ain't sticking. So what? It's a bonus. Now get out of here. We're working against the clock. I'll see you at the hangar. It's clean. Good. Get the car. This was not a coup. This was a liberation. See in the streets. The people of Pavo are celebrating. But it was a coup in so much as you seize power by military action. Now, can we stop? Herbert, why are they attacking me? It's not an attack. We have to explain your intention to hold elections. Of course. I forgot. What do you need? Uh, it's money for the team. I think it should come from you. No problem. Quiet, please. Sorry. Uh, you seize power by military action? We don't think this was a coup. It was a liberation. We intend to hold elections as soon as possible. We're about out of tape. Sometime in the 21st century. Herb. Yeah? Don't forget the money. OK, yeah. OK, we're ready. I think it'd be a good idea if you gave your men a pep talk before we packed up. Of course. I intended to. All our ducks ready to go? Derhausen never showed. Don't start, Roger. That's the equivalent of a 20% loss in manpower. The team isn't happy. I had to call in a last minute replacement. And Cicerone said there's no room for two Italians on the team, so I had to call in another designated hitter. Roger. What are you doing to me? Training weapon, Herb. You don't think we trust the boys with real live bullets, do you? You blew the mission. You traitor! You dirty bastard! Good! Good, that's what I wanted to see! How's it feel, Herb? Get him! Kill him! Get out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. You boys are in custody. Frank! It's part of the deal. What deal? My deal with Roger for your safety and for him. If they walk? That's right. No, these boys aren't going to walk. They're mercenaries. God only knows what they can be charged with. You have no authority to make that decision. Well, who does? Your life was on the line. These men are faced with capital charges. You had no right to trade me for them. It's all I had. Go on, go ahead, get out of here. You get out of the car, we're gonna fire. Frank, I told you, it's part of the deal. Now, you shoot them, you're gonna have to shoot me, too. I've seen the price you have to pay to let other people make decisions for you. How's it feel, Roger? You ever had your skin cut back? Far enough to see the bone? Get out. Get out! You're a 
dead man, Roger. I know that, Herb. Don't do it, Roger. Stay back, Vince. This is my day. Roger, listen to me. If he lives, I'll parade him through the streets like a caged monkey. His name will be a curse. Come on, Vince. You know when all this flack dies down, he'll get his own talk show. No, no, look at him. Look at what he's holding. He's got all the evidence of a coup with his fingerprints all over it. You know what you're holding, don't you, Buckwheat? All the aerial photographs, all the money for your democratic coup to make Il Pavo safe for the bottling company. You tell me, Herb. You just tell me where it's worth dying for life, liberty, and the pursuit of soda pop. All those subversives, huh? All those subversives trying to stop America from having a cold, wet one. Yeah. Fifteen years, Captain! For what? Destiny? For our children! I don't have any children. I don't have any family. I don't think of you as a father anymore, Herb. Our relationship has been sort of uh, inadequate. I have nothing. Nothing. Except Mel profits money. That's right, Herb. I am one rich son of a bitch. I mean, maybe that's what it's all about, huh? Money, 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 money. You and I, we used to believe in something. I don't know, maybe that's why they put the president's face on our damn money. <laughs> I mean, do you know anybody in Il Pavo? Do you really believe this clown is the hope of his nation? Do you give a damn? No? No, no, no. Animal. This is for Preet. No! 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 Roger, Roger don't. I'm a dead man, Vince. Whoever this man answers to, they're coming after me. I want the satisfaction of knowing that he is gone. And I want the whole pie, Roger. You're about to take that away from me. Listen to me. If he slips through and they manage to hit you, I swear on my family, I'll kill him myself. Okay, sport, let's go. I'm the president of a government in exile. Oh, yeah, and you're doing a hell of a job. So you reported the catcher. But who did he report to? Who's between striking and catcher? I don't know. You don't know the next in command? Come on, Vince. Succeeding for us depends on compartmentalizing. Roger, there's a difference between compartmentalizing and being sealed off. Now, when did catcher isolate you? He didn't isolate me. After Saigon fell, I was running some covert operations, and I traveled under phony passports. Well, who'd you report to? Catcher. Did you ever know who Catcher answered to? (sighs) 
It's been over 10 years. You traveled under aliases for over 10 years, answered only to Herb Ketcher, and you don't think you've been isolated? Why was your housekeeper killed? Preet. Preet was a uh, Chinese hooker in Quang Tree. Catcher was using her sometimes for days. A couple of operations he tried running were ambushed. He blamed her. He ordered me to kill her. I couldn't. God. <sighs> she made me feel so good. I was 17 and I didn't know you could be touched like that. I couldn't kill her. So Captain Ketcher ordered me to cut out her tongue. I was 17. I never forgave myself, so I took care of her. She took care of me. Forgive me, please, forgive me, forgive me.